Mad Dog. Was last night's loss a bad sign for the Yeah, Warriors? I think I think it was. Uh, I, I was I, I picked the Golden State to win a series on the radio prior to. I said in six games. I was wondering about the age for LeBron, Dave Davis's health. But I loved what I saw the Lakers last night. They obviously had a very good second half. They withstood a late charge. You know, they got a big layup out of D'Angelo Russell. They got to get enough offense outside of Davis. LeBron's not going to give you 40 points, so they got to have the Russells and the, uh, and the Reeves score enough points. That's a factor for him. But, geez, I think that Golden State, I mean, they made, as you said, 21 threes. I think Thompson played well. Stevie didn't. I don't know what J.J. felt about him. Poole played well. I mean, listen, Curry wasn't as a, a dominant as he was, obviously, in the Sacramento series because they sort of double-teamed him. But I, I think the Warriors are in big trouble. And plus the fact they can't play Looney in the second half because they got Davis, so they take him out of the game, they fall behind, so they take out a big rebounder. I think they're in trouble. I can see the Lakers winning the series in six games. Yeah. <clears throat> It, any loss in the playoffs is a bad sign, but I, I still think the Warriors can come back and win the series. I want to show you a screenshot of the Lakers' defense against the Warriors' starting five because this is an important point about this series. Two non-shooters on the floor right here with Kevon Looney and Draymond Green. Look where Jared Vanderbilt is guarding Steph Curry. Look at Austin Reeves top locking. That's a top lock, not allowing him to come off the screen, forcing him down into the paint with Anthony Davis. So Anthony Davis, LeBron James, they're going to be in a help position. D'Angelo Russell, off the body, in a help position. All right? So if you're going to play two non-shooters, this is the way they're going to guard. They're not going to allow Steph Curry and Klay Thompson to come off screens. They're going to force them down into the paint. It's interesting. I played against this defense all the time. Brooklyn guarded me this way in, in round one, 2018. Prior to that, in our second-to-last regular season game, we played Milwaukee. That's how Bud and the Bucks guarded me. Who was the Bucks assistant coach? It was Darvin Ham. Like, this is the way to guard them when Steph and Clay are off the ball. So what's the adjustment? you got to play small. They had success in the fourth quarter. They went on that 14-0 run when they were small and Poole was in the game. And the other point is, look, let's just let Steph Curry dance a little bit more. That Thank was the you. third least amount of ball screens that the Warriors have ran this season. And when they did run them, even with Davis as the screener's defender, they had a lot of success. Give him the basketball and play off of him. Too much of him getting off the ball. This is a series where he's got to have the ball in his hands. I 1,000% agree with you, J.J. Reddick. Put the ball in Steph Curry's hands. Let him, let him do his thing. And let everybody feed off of him because when he's off the ball, you're looking at Laker defenders that aren't even looking at the game. They're not even looking at play. They keep their eyes on him. They don't let him out of their sights. They're switching when necessary to make sure there's a contested, a contested body in his face at all times, giving him no reason to breathe. And even though Steph Curry is in phenomenal shape and better than most, if not all, and is constantly moving, the fact is you're asking a lot of him when the other guys aren't able to make things happen because obviously if he's trying to get loose just to get the basketball and other guys aren't doing what they're supposed to be doing, it's problematic. The fact that Steph Curry could have the ball in his hands, it keeps everybody's head on a swivel, and it's a better shot of Clay and of Jordan Poole getting more open shots because of the preoccupation on Steph Curry. That is what you do, and you have to go small in order to do it. They need to go back to what they did in games three and four against Sacramento and beyond in terms of whether it's Draymond or whether it's Looney. One of them coming off the bench, you've got to go small because – if you're pushing the ball and you're pushing the pace, Anthony Davis ain't going to be able to give you 45 minutes. He'll have to come out just to breathe, to get some oxygen. And when he does that, obviously yeah. that'll put the Lakers in a better position. I'm oh, sorry, the Warriors in a better position to capitalize. That's what you need to do. You need to go small and you need to put the ball in Steph Curry's hands because you don't have the size to go big and challenge Anthony Davis and LeBron and the Lakers that way. You have to go small and okay. put the ball in Steph Curry's hands. Stephen A? Yeah. Your reaction well, to what you just heard from Joel? Well, listen, I'm just of the mindset that he shouldn't play tonight. He should wait for game three. That's additional rest. He'll be ready for game three. But if he wants to play, he feels he's ready to go, more power to him. What I will say is this. Uh, he's great. He got my vote for MVP. I'm so happy for him. It's well-deserved. He's a great guy, great ambassador for the game of basketball, not just a great player. But the other thing that I will add is that it is just step one, and I'm glad he said that. He's been in 10 
playoff series in his career. He's won five of the six first-round series. He's lost all four second-round series, all four Eastern Conference semifinals appearances. Mm -hmm. The MVP is step one. Getting past this round is step two to get to the conference finals. He's got work to do. Well, game three is Friday night, so if he can play it, I mean, I would assume yeah. if uh, the extra day is not going to make that big a deal. So if he's ready to go tonight, it's great for Philly. they got a heck of a chance to win the series now. Yeah. You think he should play? I, I, I do think he should play if he can play. I mean, that's, that's the thing. You can't say Stephen A. in one breath, like, guys need to be on the court, and then in another breath, that he shouldn't be on the court. I mean, I, I don't even know why you would even say that. We just had yeah, this discussion. Yeah, I could explain it, but we don't have time. No, no, no. We just had this discussion I could explain it, but we don't have time. Inconsistent. It, you're wrong. Oh, my God. It wasn't How that. That's am I not, wrong on that? Anyway, I, 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 that's, that's, right. that's, that's, that's not where I wanted to go. I just, again, wanted to reiterate my comments earlier. It, it is remarkable. Joel Embiid started playing basketball at the age of 15 years old. He started playing basketball in Cameroon at the age of 15 years old. And a decade plus later, he's the MVP of yeah. the NBA. Just a remarkable story. A remarkable human being, so so happy and proud of him. Absolutely. If he plays, who's winning tonight? I think the Celtics will still win the game, one-one. But I think Embiid could win the series. Stephen A. Celtics win tonight. They even this series. They go back to Philly, one-one. I'll keep it consistent. Celtics, Celtics, yeah. JJ, I'm just wondering <laughs> if you could remind me what your favorite segment on TV is. Yes, oh, please. It's my favorite segment on TV. Is <laughs> what are you mad about? It's that and Ted Lasso. The only two things I like on television. What? Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.